there, sports fans. This is Play Try TV, and I'm Kinita Hanson. Hi, everybody. Diane Castillo here. We hope that everybody is now dry and safe and has uh, well recovered from that heavy, heavy downpour that we just experienced. And thank you for tuning in to Play It Right TV here. We talk to the greatest about the latest in sports. Please like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you haven't yet, share it with your friends. Give us your comments and suggestions. We always love to hear from you. Tonight, and we are talking to yeah. basketball. It's basketball that's going to be our topic for today, and it's our Halloween episode, which is the reason why I'm wearing my Zombies t-shirt. Okay, the Zombies <laughs> are actually a British pop band back from the 1960s, but it's appropriate to wear their t-shirt. And Diane, let's go and introduce our guys from Terra Firma in the PBA, first off the import, Lester the Monster Prosper. Lester. Hey there, Lester. Nice to How see you. you. Doing? How you guys doing? How you guys doing? How you feeling? Thanks. All right, we're feeling okay. I hope you're okay. I have to put on my glasses because um, it's my Superman look. <laughs> Excuse me? Very different look you, you have with your glasses on. Yeah, it's prescription. It's from Gucci. <laughs> all right, Gucci, Gucci all the way. And then next, the crunch man. Someone who's been in the PBA for ages, but he never ages. Here he is, <laughs> Alex. Hey, Alex. All the way from... Hey, guys. What's up? What's up, brother? Hey, How you doing? Man. How are you guys? How are Kamusaka. you guys? Glad Kamusaka, to be here. brother. Kamusaka. Good, good, good. <laughs> Ayos, right. Ayos. Then, Palagi. Palagi. Pa yeah. I mean, he's talking Tagalog, Alex. <laughs> okay. Now we've got a third special guest for you. A little bit of surprise, but I'm sure you all admire his skills. What he's on the court... I mean, it's just excitement all over. Here he is, Joshua Monzon. Woo! Yo, what's up, what's up? Appreciate y'all for having what's me. Up, <coughs> what's up, what's hey, up, brother? Okay. All off? right. Nice. Oh, there, there he is. is, there he is. Okay. okay. Joshua there he Monzon, is. these guys are all from Terra Firma. And Diane, fire away with your questions. Okay, guys, you know, you're... You're going through a lot right now in the PBA, but tell us, how are you? You know, I uh, I know, Lester, you were saying that all you need to do is that you you're, you guys are improving. All you need to do is have that breakthrough win. So what's the plan? I'm going to piggyback what Lester said. Uh, you know, we're doing the things that we need to do. It's just we have to uh, have that breakthrough win. Uh, I know people are judging us on, the, on the, our results, obviously, on the outcome, but... You know, we're doing the, the little things that need to be done. It's just not resulting into win. So we just need uh, that breakout win. So I'm going to piggyback what Lester said. Lester the monster. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Crunch Man. Crunch Man. <laughs> Lester, we need to ask you. Your last game against Barangay Nebra, you guys faltered in the first half. But in the second half, you were right there. You were going mano a mano against Barangay Nebra, but you were sitting down. What happened? Why didn't you come back into the game? <laughs> okay, tell us it all. Tell us, tell us in words, Lester. Tell us in words. Come on. <laughs> okay, I have, I have yeah. no. I have no idea. I have no idea. I have no clue. But it's okay. The guys were doing their thing. It's okay. Was I pissed? Yes. But you know it's okay. It is what it is. I have. You only can control what you can control at this at this point. And everybody's gonna point fingers, especially since I'm the import. Um, it is what it is. I, I, you know, you know how I am, Kenito. You know, I'll take the blame when we lose. I'll take the blame when we win. It doesn't matter. That's what a leader does. Um, unfortunately, you know the thing about me. You know me from since 2019. I've been. I'm always gonna be the same kind of player. But like, you know. I'm always mentally strong, but something like this, uh, you know, losing six straight, you know, it takes a little toll on. I'm only human, man, so it takes a it took a toll on me a little bit, and I just been off for for a little while, especially just um, you know, you you know, you feel out the vibe of some of your guys, you know, um, and it's just it's just not the same vibe anymore, you know. It's just it takes a toll on everyone, so you know, we just have to get out of that funk. I don't know how we're gonna do it, but 
we just have to do it. And and for me as an individual, I just have to, um, you know, put myself into that, you know, into that position again, that I'm just gonna, I just gotta continue to play how I've been playing um, before I got into my little funk, you know? So, you know, it has nothing to do, this has nothing to do with X and O's. This just has to do with um, effort. Like I've been like, you know, I take accountability, my lackadaisical um, play on defense sometimes, you know, um, you know, I just need to. I, I just need to get out of that that mental funk that I'm in right now. That that's all it is. Um, and which which I'm, I'm I'm out of it right now actually because I've been I've been taking a break. I've been on. A, I've been working out. I've been just doing my thing. Um, you know, yoga, doing whatever I need to do to spiritually get my mind right. What about you, Joshua? What are some of the steps that you are taking personally that are is helping yourself? And how are you guys? talking to each other to to lift each other up uh i mean personally for me it's a lot of uh you know just spending you know in my off time spending time with my family taking my mind off of you know what's going on on the basketball side of things but you know at the same time you know just 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 still trying to lock into you know getting better every day uh, i feel like you know the problem with our team is we don't sustain you know our good basketball for long periods of time i mean we might play good for five minutes, 10 minutes, but we need to, you know, have a full 48 minutes of good basketball and we haven't had that yet. So I think that's why we haven't, you know, got our, got that first win yet. But, you know, I think you see our, you see our team playing good in spurts. I mean, you might see us make a, make a, a 10, a 10 point run, you know, 15 yeah. point run. And then maybe we fall apart, you know, in the second half or something like that. So I think for us, it's just about, you know, sustaining that level of play for, you know, full 48 minutes and, uh, you know, trying to get that monkey off our backs. Yeah. A punchman. You're zero and seven right now in the conference. You've got five games left in the eliminations. Um, Alex, you're not used to be in a situation where your team is losing. You're a nine time PBA champion. Now that you're in this very strange situation with Terra Firma, how does it feel? And are you losing hope? <coughs> oh, never lose hope, uh, Canito. Uh, never lose hope. I know the guy. You know, it's just the demeanor. Um, if we're still trying and we're still um, working towards the goal and we're manif we're trying to manifest schemes and we're trying to like, like what Josh said, we're trying to uh, expand our, you know, our little intervals of, of playing well and hopefully we could expand it in certain parts of the game so we could come out on top. You know, those are the things that you want to look at. You don't want to just lay down on your back and then sit on your laurels, you know, and say like, hey, you know what, this is the end of the conference. It's never like that. You know, you always come in and you always want to just figure it out, figure out the Rubik's Cube. And as long as we're trying to figure out this Rubik's Cube that we have and, uh, and we're trying to solve it collectively as a group, even though we don't get along, like, you know, certain ideas doesn't have to match up with other ideas. But as long as we're like firing ideas and trying to win and trying and putting that extra effort um i think you know i think we're we're winning in that sense I, I know that's a win for me and uh people outside of the group or outside of the nucleus would say well that's your narrative that's your narrative our narrative is different you know our narrative is we're going to go to practice we're going to do our job we're going to do the best that we could do and you know what both teams are competing hindi naman yung isang team they're just not going to like lay down and let us win i mean they're giving 100 percent effort too so you know we're just going to continue doing what we're doing and we're not going to just give up always have faith Kenito. you know how that yeah. goes <laughs> yeah 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 certainly well, i love you I love your champion mindset, Alex. I really love that positivity and that forward and upward thinking. I, I'm sure that it's it's helping a lot of people on your team. Now, one positive thing that I love about what Lester did is um, I hear like after you lost a 50 plus game to the Bay Area Dragons, the next the very next day you went out and did your feeding, uh, your basketball clinic and feeding program. I mean that's yes. that's quite that's quite awesome, Lester. I mean it um, it's a good thing you didn't back out of that the next day after that loss. I would never I would never. I would never do that. Never. Well, yeah uh, talking about your feeding program and your basketball clinics, do you wanna share with us? I know you've been going to different barangays. Um, how did this all start and I mean who who's helping you organize it and 
where else are you going up till maybe Christmas time? Just, just basically, um, just basically, I, I reached out to a few of my people that I don't want to mention. You know, I mean, a few of the um, barangay officials also. You know, and I have a team behind me that um, they don't want to be um, mentioned also. So it's just a whole bunch of people that are behind me right now. And, um, you know, I reached out to them and we just, you know, put money up and we made it happen. You know, um, I'm going to be doing, um, I have, I did the Mayan court. I did, um, I did Tundo, you know. Mm -hmm. um, next, I think I have to do, I think I have to do one in Laguna. I have to do one. Um, and I think I might be doing one in Barakai, one in Cebu. Um, you know, it's just a few, a, diff, a few of them that I'm doing, um, continue to do. So, you know, um, this is just, I just do this from the bottom of my heart. You know, I actually wanted to do this in 2019, but um, now I'm here for a longer period of time. So, you know, while, while, um, while I'm playing, after I'm playing, I just go and, and um, get this done and, um, you know, vibe with the people, you know, touch, touch the real Philippines, you know, like, you know, like they, they have, they have Manila, that people you meet inside of BGC, Makati, but you have to touch the real, the real Philippines, the real Manila. And I, I, I like that. I like being the real, the real deal, you know? Lester, you yep. were here in 2019, as you mentioned, you were actually a replacement import, but yeah. now, you're the original import with your team. And you've also been to several countries outside of the Philippines. And I'm going to read you some of the countries where you've played. You've played in Sweden, Slovakia, Canada, Colombia, Russia, the UK. You've played in the Dominican Republic. You've played in Mexico, Venezuela. I mean, you could go around the world and you've been to all of these countries playing the game that we all love. What is special about the Philippines among the different countries that you've played in? Well, Philippines, they just, it's the love for the game, you know? Like, of course, Mexico, um, Venezuela, Dominican, they love basketball, but basketball is not their main sport. In the Philippines, you feel that kind of love that America has for the game also. So this, that's why, that's why you have to, you know, level up actually i think philippines might love basketball more than america you know <laughs> yeah for sure because first they have they have a saying that in the philippines there's god first there's god in basketball <laughs> and then everything else you know so so yeah you know it, it's it's um it's big time here but um the next country that actually you know that i really i feel that love basketball a lot is venezuela and mm. in the Dominican Republic also, and definitely Mexico. Mexico was one of the toughest leagues I played in, and I love Mexico, tell you the truth. And it's five it's five imports on the floor. So it's crazy. Oh, wow. Yeah. Five on the floor. Yeah. yeah. Esther, you said you're a very frank person, right? So how would you how would you rate uh, playing in the Philippines? Would you would you put it on, on your top favorites? Oh absolutely. Philippines number one. Oh number, number one. one. Number one for me. That's why I keep coming back here. You know? Yeah. <laughs> number one for it, me. Mex Mexico is definitely number two, though. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. because Mexico, Mexico, you're there, you're on the court with your boys. You're not by yourself. You know, you're on the court with, like, your actual guys that play in the NBA, you know, or played in top um, top um, colleges and stuff, and you, you get certain information. So it's like, it's like being on the court with, like, four – we're like four Alex Kavanaugh, so two Josh Monzoons. You know what I'm saying? It's like being on the court with those guys. You know what I'm saying? Awesome, awesome. You have some sort of communication. Lester, Filipino food, Lester, Filipino food, Mexican food. You know, I love, I love both, I love both foods. Uh, adobo, but Mexican food is just, uh, Mexican food just hits the spot too, though. You know, you gotta, you gotta check, check out the Mexican food. You know, but adobo definitely hit the spot. One, one food I'm not trying is balut. I'm not trying balut. <laughs> no, not balut. Not balut. Out of all the times you've been to the Philippines, you, you've never tried balut? No, 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 no. Wow. <laughs> hey, Joshua, I, you've got a nice smile in your face. I don't want. How do you say that in, I I have, you say I that in Tagalog? I don't want. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
De Ayauco. Ayauco. Okay. <laughs> Joshua, uh, let me ask you a basketball-related question. We're talking about the identity of your team, Terra Firma Jeep. I see you as an explosive open court type of player, but you've right. got a lesser prosper. You've got an Alex Cabagdot. Those guys are specialists when it comes to the half court setup game. So are you feeling um, comfortable with a system that's being run uh, by coach uh, John Adele Cardell? How do you fit into this system, Josh? Uh, I mean, you know, right now I'm just, uh, you know, taking my opportunities as I get them. Uh, I'm out there just being aggressive. Uh, and at the same time, making my making plays for my teammates. So I think it's just a balance of, you know, looking for my shot and, uh, you know, getting the ball to my teammates. So I think that's just a, you know, ongoing process of me getting, you know, still situated in this offense. And uh, I think it's just, you know, going to be something that we continue to work at until, you know, we all get on the same page. So, you know, but I'm committed to to doing that, you know, putting my all in the, you know, getting better every day and, uh, you know, becoming better, not just as, you know, myself, but as a team. And so, you know, hopefully we can put that together and, and you know, have some success going ahead. I'll just do a follow-up question, Josh. Uh, before you moved to the PBA, you were such a tremendous 3x3 player. Do you miss playing 3x3? Do you want to go back to that uh, uh, aspect of basketball? Or do you want to play with 3 one 5 no, 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 I mean, not okay, really. What, what do you say? Not really. But I mean, three x three was fun. It was a fun phase, I say. But at the same time, you know, I've been playing five on five. I've been playing. I've been playing five on five my whole my you know my whole career, and even my okay. first my first four years of my career, I was playing in the ABA. I was playing in Thailand. I was playing five on five, and then I took a little. Sure, in a, in a mission to play 3x3 and, and, you know, coming back to 5-on-5, five five, it's been, you know, it's been fun. I, I, you know, taking that time off, playing 3x3, traveling the way I, you know, got to travel, it was definitely a great experience. So, you know, I'm thankful for that experience and, uh, you know, just another thing to keep pushing, pushing forward and, and keep getting better. So, <coughs> I'll take it. Uh, what's it like playing with uh, Joshua and Lester? Alex. Oh, um, but you know, playing with them, it's, you know, actually, we're, we're still trying to learn each other, actually. It's not a, it's not like an end product yet. But, mm -hmm. you know, the learning process, and at least we're, we're ahead of the learning curve, actually. Yeah. We're actually ahead of the learning curve, and I'm excited. I'm still, you know, every game we come in, I'm still excited playing. You know, I'm excited playing with these guys. I'm excited Josh is running down the wings. I'm yeah. excited for, for Lester hitting his one leg three pointer or his three pointer <laughs> shots. Like I'm still trying I am we're still trying to figure each other out. And we didn't have a long preseason. I, I, I got in a week before or a week and a half before the tournament started from therapy. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Lester came in I think a week before me and uh we were just like, Okay, we had lots of hope and we still have lots of hope. I mean, I'm not. I don't want to speak like it's like we have deaded hope right now. But uh, we still have lots of hope, and we have playing with these guys and with the other guys on the team. It's actually kind of for me. It's special because they're a little younger, so their vibe is a little bit uh, up tempo. And you know, when I, where I was, where I was uh, used to for the last how many years, it, we weren't as up, up tempo. You know, so we're playing against playing with these guys now. They're a little bit more up tempo, and it's a little bit. It's bringing me back to my youth a little bit. So whenever I play with them, I feel like I'm I'm getting younger by the minute. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love that intro of Kinito uh, about you being uh, ages. It's been in the PBA for eight <laughs> age. As a up to that, because sure, you have a lot championship experience. Having any Joshua, that you just need to play better. That you're playing better in spurts and you need to just, you know, keep it going for 48 minutes. So I think in my, no, um, what can, what can perhaps make it finally click for you guys? Well, that's where we're at right now. We're at the drawing board every day. Every practice, we're always at the drawing board trying to make, uh, trying to adjust certain things, uh, trying to um, make moves for, you know, I think, three games this conference we lost in the last couple of minutes, you know, last two minutes. I, th I think, I think, I, you know, I, I mean, you have to back check me on that, Canito, but uh, I think 
I think two or three games we lost in the last two minutes. Fourth Imagine quarter. If, and we played hey, well. You're so right. Yeah, fourth you're so quarter, right, Alex. Yeah, fourth fourth quarter stuff. So imagine mm -hmm. if that energy that we had can be transferred to the last two minutes of what we had in the beginning and we transferred to the, you know, just moving pieces and parts like that. I mean, we could easily be two, three games in right now, you know, if yeah. that's what the basketball gods wanted for us. But as of right now, that's not what God wants for us. He wants us to figure it out. And he wants us to, instead of moving pieces together, he wants us to just make it longer. Make God it wants us to go in seven. God exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's exactly where he, we're exactly where we're supposed to be. <laughs> you have five more games to go. But Alex, you, know, you came off an eight month layoff. You had a torn Achilles stand. That was that was huge. I mean, you've had a lot of injuries in your career, but uh, this was major. But uh, you know, your management, the organization, put a lot of faith and trust in you. They signed you to a two year extension last april and uh you know i thought that uh that spoke volumes of how they believe in you alex and uh, uh yeah you, you've, you're taking on a huge responsibility with this team but uh i know that you're not losing hope there's five more games to go but alex i think the way you're explaining it is just so positive you're not yeah. looking at the win column you're looking at the effort that you guys are doing game after game and with Lester and Joshua there, Alex, you know, I don't think things are bleak at all. Alex, what do you think? I don't think so either. I don't think so either. Hey, but I'm not big on moral victories. Let me let me get that straight right there. Okay. One of the few things I I disagree with. I don't believe in like I don't believe in resting your 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 efforts in moral victories. And uh, but at this moment, that's what God has put, you know, laid us out for us. I mean, we can't be down right now, you know. Uh, Moral victories were never something that I was, uh, uh, I never got along with moral victories because I always wanted the outcome because, you know, we're such, our society nowadays is such outcome based, you know, uh, you know, whatever your output is has to match your outcome. But at this point in juncture, being a young team, you know, not, you know, not having a lot of time together as what every other team has, uh, I think we're, I think we're just exactly where we're supposed to be. Like what Lester said, like we're laughing about. God wants us to be zero seven right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm curious about you saying why God wants you to be in zero seven. So, um, how are you gonna? How are you? Don't you think God wants you to win the last five games? <laughs> he does. He does. Well, you know what? Let me ask. He does want us to do it, but he wants us to do it the right way. He definitely wants us to do it the right way. You know. We could have won those two games or three games. I think, Canito, if you back check me, those two, three games, yeah. we could have won that. But we would have never learned what we needed to learn. You know what I'm saying? So, pag nanalo kami doon, we were just, you know, typical human behavior. We would have just sat back on those two, three wins and say, hey, we won two, three games. We're two games away from the playoffs, and we got it all made. So, I think that would put a hinder on us for the long stretch of our, the, for our future, for future careers, especially for like Josh and like Lester, they got like 10 years ahead of them still. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, you know, things like this, it's just a, like a learning experience. Like you never know, Lester could go to another team and he could use this, what he's learned he, now, and it could it catapult him to like even a bigger, better, stronger player. So as Josh, he could God, God this. definitely wants that. God wants that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. God did. I don't got that much years yet. I, I don't got that much years left. So I'm just I'm thinking about like, you know, this is where I'm supposed to be at the moment. <laughs> hey, you know, I, I really love the way you're thinking and positive and up and up. <laughs> You know what? This, th you know what? Even though we're zero and seven, we could still laugh at it because we know we're trying. You yeah. know, it's not like it's not like we're laughing at you know the best form of flattery and the best form of just understanding what we're going through is being comical. Especially we could laugh at ourselves and know like, hey, we're trying. It's just not working out right now. And <laughs> and this is exactly how our our vibe is in practice. You know, we're, we're steady laughing. We're continuous. O only if you guys have like a camera that follows us all day, you can see we're just smiling this whole time in practice. That would so, be fun. 
it would be fun to follow the three of you. <laughs> that certainly would. <laughs> <laughs> no, it won't be. <laughs> Lester, before this conference, you said you had a lot of unfinished business in the PBA. Okay, talking about unfinished business. Let me business tell you. Finished. Let me tell you the rest of your assignment. Okay, you've got ENP November five. You've got Northport November twelve. You've got NLEX November eighteen. You've got San Miguel Pier November twenty three. You've got Phoenix your last game November twenty six. What do you say about the coming assignments and your unfinished business, Lester? This business is finished. <laughs> no, <come on>. Yo, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, okay. No, no, no. I'm just being funny. Don't don't mind me. Um, okay. No, we we, we got to play hard every game. You know, play hard every single game. So that's that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm I'm never going to change my approach. I'm always going to play hard. And I looked at the film. I see what I needed. I need to do and like i said what 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 i was doing i take accountability what i was doing was lackadaisical defense i got to step up my defense help my teammates better i gotta um communicate a lot more and i just gotta go back to being myself and not let this oh and seven um situation affect me mentally and emotionally i gotta control my emotions control my mental as a leader um you know of this team so you know that's what i gotta that's what i gotta go out there and do and i take pride in that also so like like Alex said, <laughs> this is a <laughs> Alex. Why are you making me laugh? <laughs> you see you see how these guys treat me, Kenito? <laughs> yeah. You guys are cracking me up. But yeah, you have a question for Joshua, I'm sure. <laughs> but yeah, well, this, this is what but this is what we do in practice, you know. Yeah. Uh, we're we're working hard and we're smiling and this is, this is what it is. But um, no, I think, to tell you the truth, I think the next five games is, I think it's going to be our best five games because we have nowhere we have nowhere else to go but up. You know, we have nowhere else to go but up. <laughs> Joshua, what Josh. is your what is your mindset going into the next five games against those teams that Kenito I'm just mentioned? here. I'm trying to win. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I want to win every, t every time I step on the court. You know, I'm a I'm competitive at all times. You know, if it's me and somebody we walk into the door, I want to touch the door first. So, losing these seven games has been it's been a lot. So, I mean, I'm competitive every time I step on the court, and uh, you know, my mess my mindset is just go out there, continue to you know be a good teammate, continue to uh, be aggressive on, on the offense and defense, and uh, you know, leave it all on the court. And that's you know, I think that's all we can ask from everybody on the team at this point, for sure. Let's get off your mom. Yeah, Lester, uh, just to ask you a little bit about your background. You played for a Division three school in the NCAA, Old West. Yeah, Curry. yeah. But despite your uh, D Division three background, I mean, you went on to have a tremendous and very impressive professional basketball career. You've also yeah. become a naturalized player for Indonesia. Yeah. Can you tell us about your humble beginnings and how you grew up with the values that make you the man that you are. Well, well, basically, my um, when I came when I came to America, my first sport was cricket. So, you know, cricket. Um, yeah, cricket. I'm an English man, English sport. So it's a uh, West Indian. You know, we were we were colonized from the from the Brits. So, therefore, they they taught us cricket, and you know, that's the culture that that's that's embedded in our culture. So that's um what i learned that was my first sport my favorite sport you know cricket and so track what, so um, you originate what, what country are you originally from um dominica but i grew up in montserrat you know it's in the lesser okay. Antilles, right next to antigua and barbuda you know okay. so but, so well, basically it's a <laughs> I, I grew up the most again. interesting man in the world. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't consider myself I don't consider myself black or white or or Indonesian or Filipino. I'm a world citizen. I'm a human being, you know. So so basically so basically um being being raised there um i learned i learned cricket learned that's my sport you know we never really played basketball my mother always been strict on me and stuff like that um that i didn't meet my father until i was 11 years old because the island the island i was living in had a volcano a volcanic expl explosion and we all had to um evacuate and i moved to america 
And that's when I met my father, stayed with my aunt. You know, um, basically my aunt son didn't want me living in the house. You know, he was um, very jealous, you know, and, um, you know, we got into fights and stuff. She um, she ended up kicking me out, you know, and um, went into a group home after that. And then I stayed in a group home from like 13 to 21 years old. And in the group home is when oh. I picked up is the group home is when I picked up basketball and stuff like that, because we were always being physical with each other in the, in the group home. They were being tough with me. So that's where I got my toughness from. That's where I got my grit from, especially growing up in New York, Yonkers, New York, growing up in Long Island, you know, um, that's, that's where I got my, my toughness from and stuff like that. So, you know, um, I just, I just, um, you know, in the beginning of my career, it wasn't going so well, but like, like Alex said, you know, um, these things that you, these experiences that you're going through, um, can be put, um, forward to put in replacement of teaching you, you know, how to handle the next situation that you're in. So this is what, this, this is what has made, had made me, um, become much more, um, prolific in my career. Yeah. I, how your heart has opened up to the poor and the underprivileged. How did that happen? Well, you know, I grew up that way. You know, I grew up that way. I didn't always have money. So, you know, um, so always, you know, you don't have somebody from the NBA coming to visit you. And, you you know, sometimes as a, as a kid, you wish that somebody would come and say, um, hey, man, let me train you here today. You and your friends come down from, you know, playing from this team and that team. You know, only only one person actually got me into that situation when I was younger. And there's a trainer named Jerry Powell brought me to um to South Jersey with Eddie Curry and one of the most powerful men in basketball today named World Wide West, um, who I think he was managing um, Michael Kid Gilchrist, at, Kid, Kid Gilchrist at the time. And that was the only time I've been around somebody. And I looked at them like a, in like an idolized way and say, this is what I need to do. And this is what I need to be doing. And that was only one one time that happened to me but um other than that i never i never saw any nba basketball players that came around me until now that i'm 27 30 you know and then that one guy named carlos boozer you know that that was around me and him trained me and chris bosh trained you know but this wasn't until i was 27 28 29 you know that that kind of age you know and um you know, I wish I had somebody at a uh, when I was five, six, seven years old that put me in an AU program. You know, like I'll be, I'll be in, in the league right now for sure. Yeah. Give, well, give, some, give give the kids hope. That's how you give the kids hope. You know, we come down from the PBA and they see somebody come down from the PBA. They're like, "Yo, this is this is Lester. This is Alex. Oh, this is Josh." You know, they're like, I want to be like these guys. And they work hard. They work hard. You know, those kids are out there playing with no shoes on. I saw those kids playing with no shoes on, shooting jump shots in the rain, shooting jump shots in the garbage. You know, it's it's unbelievable. You know, and I was like, man, this is crazy. You know? Well, it's really wonderful that you have that kind of heart, you know. Uh, and I know that uh, hopefully that you'll have one kid you know, even if it was just one kid who would look up to you and say, hey, Lester gave me that hope and I want to make something out of my life, then I'm sure it would be more than worth it. Yeah, I think I think stuff like this could be a domino effect, depending on the opportunity. If, you know, they have a lot of coaches down in the Baron guys. So look at how Paul Lee got an opportunity. Look, you know, a lot of these guys got opportunities, you know, so they just have to go back and give back, you know, you know, have somebody take a look because they have a, so much talent. Filipinos are such passionate, hardworking people. And I'm not just saying that because I'm here. I've been I've been saying that since I stepped foot in this country in 2019. They are. Look at look at how people go by day by day, four o'clock in the morning, people are on the road getting getting to it, you know, so. You know, yeah. like, who who are we not not to just say, you know what, let me go down here. You know, who am I that makes money, that make money in your country, um, not to go down there and step in, step foot in the barren guys and say, you know, let me let me give some of my knowledge. Let me give out some food. You know, let me spend time with these people. You know, like, that's nothing. That's like three, four hours out of my day. That's nothing at all. That's a couple hundred dollars out of my pocket. That's nothing. You know, that's that's, that's, really where this, that, that's that's really where this inspiring. came from. Yeah, that's, so that's really inspiring, and it's great. It's great to hear it straight from you because it's coming from your heart. 
and Lester, that's why we admire you. And that's why uh, you've got a lot of fans. And, you know, before we end this uh, episode, and it's been, it's been a very interesting one, we want to ask each and every one of you just to invite uh, your fans not to give up on Terra yes. Firma. That you're going to be out there still fighting. And Alex, I actually, let's start off I with actually, you. I actually saw... I actually saw yeah. a person in Paranake gym yesterday with a terra firma jersey on. I was like, wow. All right. All right. <laughs> well, Alex, I we'll took start a photo with, with him. Yeah. Start off with you, Alex. Um, you're you're celebrating your 40th birthday on December 8th. Um, I didn't want to have to remind you, but you don't you, you don't look 40. You, you're not playing like you're 40. Um, I also want to remind you what you were the second overall draft pick in 2005. There's only two players left. Still playing from that draft year. That's you and Larry for the share. But but you guys, you guys are still in there. You're in the mix, man. You're in the mix. What you about know, the guy from Enlex? What about the guy from Enlex? Yeah, Asi Taulava. Yeah, but he's got us. He's got to play at least one game. <laughs> he's 41 years old. But uh, yeah. but Alex, um, you're an inspiration Hi. too, just like Les. And you know, just like Joshua. I mean, I'm such a big fan of Joshua, and he knows it. Because I've told him many oh, yeah. times that in the open court, this guy's unstoppable. But uh, like you know, to all the Terra Firma fans that's been, you know, supporting us to this point, uh, I feel like, you know, we're going to get over the threshold. Hopefully, and, you know, over these next five games, we get one of these next five games. And, uh, you know, we're going to continue to keep keep working hard and keep trying to, you know, put a win put a win in the in the win column. So, hey, we're just going to keep, keep, keep chopping at it and keep doing what we have to do to, you know, try and make you guys proud out there. All right. Thank you, Joshua. Let's hear your final thoughts. My final thoughts is that um, we have to go, we have to be, we have to play super, super, super uh, methodical these um, last five games. And we have to play harder than we have ever played before. And that starts with me. And that's all I got to say. I got to do it. That's it. Okay. We'll, we'll, live with the, we'll, we'll, we'll live with the results. We play hard to live with the results. Okay, guys, we've lost uh, Alex Kabagnot. Uh, <laughs> we certainly heard a lot from him during this episode. And uh, thanks Thank a lot, you. Lester. Thanks a lot, Joshua. In, in absentia, thanks a lot, Alex Kabagnot. We're rooting for Terra Firma. You've got five more games. And uh, the best of luck to you guys. And thanks for joining Play It Right TV. Looking oh, forward oh, yeah. to the breakthrough win. We'll out for it. Uh, oh, listen, yeah. listen. Kenito and Diane, if we get a breakthrough win next game, I'll take you guys out to the most expensive restaurant in, in Manila. All right. Okay. That's a promise. That's a promise, Josh. That's a promise. You, you <laughs> That's okay. a promise. Kenito, I'll come, so record, I'll, come to give so you a, I'll come to give you a good luck hug before the game. All right. I hope I I hope I do that game. Yes, me too. <laughs> Okay, guys. Thank you, guys. Thanks for, oh, yeah. thanks for joining us. Josh, thank you. Thank you for your time. And Lester, no always a pleasure. Always a pleasure thank to talk you. to you, man. Thank you. Thank thank you. Pleasure. Pleasure Appreciate you guys, thank you guys for having me. Thank you, guys. See you, guys. Bye -bye. See you, guys. You know, Bye -bye. Listening to them, you wouldn't think that they're, they're winless right now. I mean, I love their energy. Like you said, they're, you know, they're, they're still maintaining their, their good spirits and staying positive and focused on improving and knowing that, you know, you just got to keep doing the right things and that, that will, win will come and hopefully that will be the turnaround for them to score a couple more wins in this well, remaining well, last five. For all, oh, I think the most important thing is, as you said, they are, they're enjoying themselves, they're having fun, <laughs> and they've got an outlook where uh, they feel that they're just, you know, they're just a few minutes away from uh, yeah. breaking into that win column. As as Alex said, there were about two or three games where they felt that they could have won, but, uh, well, the basketball gods have spoken. They're 0-7 and seven at this point. But uh, we're looking forward to Terra Firma bouncing back, maybe not at this conference, maybe in the next. Well, that's oh, it. Thank you very much for joining us on Play It Right TV. Diane? Thank you. We hope to see you in our next episode. Please visit our sister company, playitright.com, for some wonderful products for sports and fitness. They have great promos. You're going to love each purchase, not just for yourself, for your family as well. Please check them out. Playitright.com and please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel, Play It Right TV. 
We hope you enjoy this episode. We'll see you next time. I'm Diane Castillejo. Kinito Hanson. Thanks a lot. Play it right. TV.